saw in the last year didn't just start with Bernie Sanders at all. You know, I look back 20 years ago almost, the spirit of Seattle in 1999, when 50,000 people descended on the city of Seattle to protest the World Trade Organization. You know, the neoliberal movement uh, agenda kept moving forward, but every step of the way, people were waking up and protesting. And, you know, for two years after the spirit of Seattle, that protest movement grew all over the world. I remember it was being referred to as a global stalking movement, wherever the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank or the G8 were meeting, there were bigger and bigger demonstrations. By the summer of 2001, we're talking about in Genoa, Italy, I think a million people. You know, all over the world this was happening. The movement has some power. I remember the divestment movement that helped bring change to South Africa. We've got to divest in the banks that are funding the fossil fuel industry. And we can have a vibrant democracy, but it doesn't happen by sitting on our rear ends and being quiet. I am encouraged by you know, by this massive march today, by yesterday's resistance, by the walkouts from high schools and colleges across the country, by the strike of the longshoremen on the West Coast, uh, which needs to be a symbol for us all, and I think a tactic we are going to be standing on, uh, very, you know, uh, lifted up and encouraged by the fight of the uh, indigenous leaders at Standing Rock and, and the, many, the many fights that are following in suit against the pipelines in Memphis, in Texas, uh, in really all around the country, uh, that on so many fronts people are standing up for nothing short you know, of an America and a world that works for all of us. I think we have seen that the piecemeal uh, solutions, uh, the window dressing on a burning house, you know, is not what unifies people, is not what brings us out, is not what engages people in struggle. We need to be really standing up for a transformative uh, agenda that puts people, planet, and peace over profit and nothing less than that. Uh, we have the numbers, we have the solutions, we have the power, it's time to get organized. When we stand up with the power that we do have, we can create an America and a world that works for all of us, that puts people, planet, and peace over profit. This is the time to get organized around the issues, to get organized into, in our communities, and to get organized fundamentally, politically, because that's where we come together to achieve critical mass. Politics is a game of fear. Those who do not make power elites afraid do not succeed. All the movements that opened up the democratic space in America, the abolitionists, suffragists, communists, socialists, anarchists, and the labor and civil rights movements developed a critical mass and militancy that forced the centers of power to respond. The platitudes about justice, equality, and democracy are just that. Only when power is threatened does it react. Appealing to its better nature is useless. It doesn't have one. The moment we defy power, we are victorious. The moment we stand alongside the oppressed and accept being treated like the oppressed, we are victorious. The moment we hold up a flickering light in the darkness for others to see, we are victorious. The moment we thwart the building of a pipeline or a fracking site, we are victorious. And the moment those in power become frightened of us, we are victorious. I do not fight fascists because I will win. I fight fascists because they are fascists. Thank you.